And uh, hi, everybody. This is Brett from Crypto Mastery here, and I want to welcome you to this week's class. And just a quick reminder, uh, the Future of Crypto Summit starts here in a week and a half or so, the 26th. So uh, make sure to go over and register for that Future of Crypto Summit dot com we've got a lot of great speakers that are going to be there of course myself and uh, mike my business partner and you can read more about that there and all the great speakers uh, did a great little interview with max Wright yesterday so that'll be over on his channel here in the day uh, probably today i think we'll have that up and uh, i won't go into it now but uh, a lot of great speakers here mark yusko is here great interviews from quite a few speakers uh Demelza hayes is the uh, chief economist at coin telegraph i enjoyed that as well so just a quick little reminder on that but uh let's go ahead and dive into the uh, heat map here of what's going on in the markets just a quick hello to everyone here's here live uh rennie lisa ray cornelia david alex glenn mike and of course uh, Mary is here. So thanks everyone for being here. And of course, I've got my N3 crypto hat on. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, today's class is uh, about and you know, how to use these indicators that we have to maximum effect. And of course, you can learn more about that at the new website, cryptomastery.org. Just letting you guys know what we've been up to. And uh, so let's dive into it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I do have the chat open here and I can see that. And so looking at this, you know, I don't love the heat map. I like to use the heat map as just an overall barometer. The markets are, you know, just kind of stagnating. We had a little bit of a down day. Last two days, we've been expecting that pullback and uh, looking for a bounce here. So we'll dive into that as well. So rather than look at this page, I like to uh, jump over to the heat map and just kind of see. But we already can see there's not a whole lot going on. We'll pull up some coins here and do some case studies on how to use the indicators and uh, also look at the overall markets. So uh, with that in mind, let me just open a couple, couple things up here. And I get over to our Crypto Mastery a list of what we're watching. Bitcoin, of course, is uh, important. And this chart here, I want to unpack a little bit. Let me turn off the uh, drawings for a second so we can see everything. And uh, I'll turn off, well, let's see, just so you know what you're looking at. We have the average true range, which is one of our indicators here that flipped to uh, entry back here below the 50 day EMA. Sorry, we're on the weekly EMA. So, but we're in a bullish uptrend. That was, it flipped bullish right after that bottom around 16.5 that we were looking at and I uh, had called the bottom down here. So it looks like that was uh, correct. And uh, at least as of yet, I don't, I do believe that was the bottom. And now that we're above the 21 and 50 week EMAs, that's good. I'll turn off the uh, ATR there, that's average true range. So now we have a little bit easier to uh, look at chart so that you guys can see. And uh, these green boxes are part of the new early reversal indicator pro that uh, essentially lo it looks at money flow and where the buying blocks are in the um, on the order books. So we've uh, been seeing some good, you know, it's just another way to reinforce what we've been seeing in the other indicators that we have. So I think that this, you know, this is very bullish here. This These two big candles, as you would imagine, indicate buying uh, blocks and order flow, money flow. So good to have that layered in visually. And uh, so we had this weekly ERI here on Bitcoin. This was just a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago in uh, September. Yeah, September 11th, uh, Monday, September 11th. So pushed up and um, had an early reversal indicator on the weekly and a bullish engulfing candle. So those are two good signals that we'd like to see in conjunction with each other. And now we're back above, you know, the 2150 week EMAs, as I said. We also have a nice cup and handle pattern forming, which, um, you know, I really like these number of patterns forming all at once, though, is the, is the issue, isn't it? So we have a bit of a cup here with a handle what we'd be looking for is a break above the handle top here around 31k really 32k but a close above 31k i think is going to be bullish you know i have been saying 32k is the definitive number when we get above that uh, we're off to the races but just to visualize that right in this range we can see how that's what a pivotal oh okay i've already got it on the chart yeah so this green line here Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you guys, but I think you guys understand this green line here has been such a strong level of support all the way back in Jan of 2021, came in held here in that midsummer pullback in of 2021. And of course, the early reversal indicator, we nailed the bottom 
to the week and to the day with that such a great indicator that I uh, was sort of accidentally discovered. And uh, and then it's sort of the weekly basis called the top here, these red arrows, and then we kind of kept coming down. But back to the green line, it held support, support broke down below and then immediately became resistance right in here, if you can see where I'm looking in that region. So this 20, 31,000, 32,000 level, so important as is the 25,300 level we've been watching. But for right now, that's what I'm looking at. Can we get above it? So cup and handle is a new, it's just sort of an overlay. If you look at, if I put anything else on here, you won't be able to see that cup and handle pattern. Those are some of my favorites when it breaks above that handle, which would be around that 32K level. However, what else do we see here? We have this uptrending channel, this new uptrending channel for Bitcoin that uh, had FTX not collapse this little market here, this final capitulation, which is a good thing if we're putting in market bottoms and uh, then pushing us higher uh, into this new uptrending channel. So that's bullish. I'm, I'm waiting and watching for that to play out. Um, but then inside of all of this, there's this possibility for a bearish head and shoulders, right? So left shoulder, kind of a weak head. You know, I'm sort of wondering, is this a double top? But uh, and, or just a resting phase, because within this uptrending channel, I think this is my I'm leaning toward this scenario. We kind of, you know, either push up to the question mark area into the 30,000 level and then retrace back to the lower end of the channel, because that's pretty strong support all the way back here. And we've got multiple levels of support. If we zoom out on all this, we can see back to uh, August of 17. And um, so we have a number of two, these two trend lines really important to watch. I know it seems like a lot, but good, good news is sooner than later, we'll have, we'll know. We'll definitively know and uh, we'll start to kind of push higher. And it may be, you know, look, I think December is really when we push hard and bounce up. And I think this, this scenario plays out. Either we go sideways, kind of in this symmetrical wedge that we see forming. Again, there's multiple patterns overlaying each other. And then, but at some point breaking out of that and going higher. Now, if we don't, and if we lose that 25.3 level right in here, which uh, has been so important. Actually, it's this one that uh, held uh, was resistance back in here, came up, resistance broke, flipped as support, support. So the 25.3 level, this one is uh, very important. Okay, so let me make that a little thicker so you guys can see that. And actually, why don't we make that black just because it's so it stands out from the others. So this is the floor. If we break below 25.3, and if it's out in this area, we lose that 25,000 level right over here. Then, uh, you know, we, we've been be looking at possibly and probably retesting the 20,000 level, which is a CME gap. And there's right down in this range down in here. So I'll just draw that on the chart. And we've been looking at that a little closer in our uh, M3 crypto uh, course, uh, which is our class tomorrow on Wednesdays, dive a little deeper into these markets. And uh, but here, right around this area, there's a just above 21. K, hey, there's a CME gap. If you don't know what it is, you can Google it. Uh, and it doesn't really matter that other than these tend to fill and come back down and then uh, go higher, but they don't always fill. And there is still one at 98.75, right down below the $10,000 level. Uh, there was a point, even though I thought 16.5 would be the bottom, I was still looking at 14K, maybe 12.5, maybe 10K. And if we got to 10K, probably dip down to that 98.75. CME gap at this point, I don't think that's going to happen, but we have a lot of uncertainty in the world right now, don't we? With potentially a new war, uh, you know, percolating and the markets don't like uncertainty. So um, we just have to see you guys. Uh, I think this time frame, we we're probably not going to see a lot of big moves to either direction, you know, into uh, November, December. I, I say probably because there's always a wild card. So, you know, we have news. We're going to open up some news here in a minute. Uh, there's October 17th coming up as one of the deadlines for an ETF. Not the BlackRock ETF, some smaller ones more than likely will not get approved. But hey, uh, if they want to open the door to the ETFs for BlackRock, Fidelity, everyone else, they might say, all right, well, we'll have to let GBTC in first and let them convert over from their current holdings uh, scenario or uh, structure rather into a uh, ETF. So if that happens, we could see a huge candle. I mean, that would be a catalyst, but I don't think so. You know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. 
You've heard me say that a hundred times. And uh, I think we just crab walk up, slightly go higher, eat, maybe push up higher here, get everyone excited. Because let's face it, these markets, they are, while they're efficient, uh, they are designed to buy the bigger players to fool and uh, and trick as many traders as possible. So a rally into here would have everyone saying, this is it, everyone go long. And then the shorts pile on, bring it back down, liquidate all those leverage longs. And then we kind of hold in here and then go higher. We could even see a wick down, but losing this trend line. So everybody panics and, and then they bring it back up. So key thing to remember, wait for the closing candle and the closing price, because we've seen it a number of times. Here's a good example of that where down in here, this candle right here on Monday, uh, March 6th, was all the way down, big red candle, right? And everybody, people were selling, and uh, shorts were getting liquidated, the stop losses were getting, getting hit. And then right here, right around this uh, 19,500, on that same week, rather, this is weekly candles, they, they pushed back up higher and we held the trend channel. So that's very bullish. So keeping that in mind. And um, you see another one right here. If I turn off this uh, ERI right there, this candle came down, was breaking that 25,000 level briefly. And then on the weekly basis, pushed back up. So anyway, that's what I'm looking for. And then of course, if we get above that 32,000 level or when we do, eventually we will, then I think it's a pretty fast push up to the 48K to 50K. So all we have to do is draw Fibonacci from the market cycle high down to the low. And it puts us right in that golden pocket here, right about there. So 48 to 50K, uh, highly likely that uh, that zone gets filled before before a pullback, you know, and then uh, and then we'd want to see it kind of break above and retest. So I'll put that as the, uh, we'll just note they, notate that as the golden pocket or GP. So uh, I have a question here. I'll answer that. So golden pocket, K. So David asks, uh, do you have, do you give the head and shoulders any credence if it's on a shorter time frame? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the uh, head and shoulders, uh, you know, it's still the same pattern. So for example, here, I'll get rid of the uh, FIB here, but um, I was calling that, and you can look on my trading view and I was publicly predicting that head and shoulders pattern would send us lower back uh, in here. I'll just hand draw it because it's faster, but so you see the, the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder, and then we went down. So on the weekly basis, you can see it. I was see noticing on the daily basis. So even if we switch over to a daily, you know, it's a bit sloppy, but um, it's it's the same pattern. Yeah. So shorter time frames, you know, um, occasionally the four hour, you know, you uh, on the smaller time frames, like 15 minutes, you don't see that as much or the hourly just because they tend to oscillate and uh, have a more of an up and down oscillation. So uh, in going through the um, the full kind of range of motion. But anyway, uh, let's see. i am just get rid of that last arrow there. Cool. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's move on here. Actually, we didn't do uh, the news yet. So. I'll, uh, I'll pull that off screen and we'll pull up some news. Anyone have any other questions? I do this last minute uh, so that we're getting the uh, the most relevant and timely news. And uh, okay, here's a good one. Paul, Paul Tudor Jones is still bullish on Bitcoin. Let me pull this over here. And uh, he's a big uh, trader, famous trader. So I won't open that up because CNBC uh, has a doesn't like my uh, ad blocker. But that's the headline. Paul Tudor Jones still bullish on Bitcoin. I mean, these guys, you never know why. They means they were buying it for the last 12 months. Um, let's see. This is interesting. The Bitcoin 16-year cycle in correlation to the internet bubble. Uh, let's see the hill. Don't buy Bitcoin's dishonest attempt to paint itself green. Yeah, we still want to maintain a bit of a, a contrarian view with all of this, but um, let's uh, see how things play out. We can go over to daily uh, hodl, see what's going on there. Sometimes Coin Telegraph has good uh, has good news. We like those guys. So there we go, Coin Telegraph, and you know, let's see. Uh, and then we'll go back into the charts here. But, you know, I mean, of course, SBF is in the news right now, uh, finding out they were pulling out. There's like $400, $500 million hack uh, in right before they declared bankruptcy. And that was kind of the catalyst. So let's see. War, CPI, 28K, five things to know Bitcoin this week. And probably good to examine that. Just so we know that the where the lines are drawn. You know, again, I'm watching the chart and seeing what uh, is being weighed in. But, so, you know, it's good to know what's possibly on the horizon. And the uh, Israel had Hamas uh, war, tragic. Uh, it's uh, 
uh, you know, hasn't really affected the markets too much, but I think it's a symptom of a weakened global economy. And, um, I, and, and I don't mean that specifically Israel and Hamas. So forgive me if, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about there. I think though, you know, with Russia, Ukraine, we've got China, Taiwan, we've got, you know, tensions heat up when the economies are down, resources are scarce it's going to happen and we have to be aware of that so it could be could be more of that uh, on the way is my point okay so uh here's the articles more cpi 28k price uh five things to know you know we have to keep in mind a lot of these articles are designed to get us to click and again go or see the advertisements and click on those so i'm going to skim through this uh i have a cool new tool though look at this i've got the highlighter tool uh, that uh some of these guys use and if i can go Let's see. I'm still learning it, though. A toggle cursor. And yeah, so you can do the little highlight deal. And uh, but I uh, won't do that for just no reason. But there you go. Um, analyze the four hour chart. A popular trader that we've never heard of named Skew. <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, October, generally most bullish month of the year. Um, you know, we can't count on anything. Um, it's interesting, though. He's saying there's a bullish flag here. I mean, this, it's another pattern we're overlaying in there. It's it, uh, it's funny how the mind sees what it wants to see. But even if we call it a cup and handle or a bullish flag, still, it's got to kind of break out of this zone up here around 30 to 32K. OK, which is also a strong support resistance area. So whatever you want to call it, you can call it a little green Martian. It doesn't matter. This is the area we need to see a break above. And I've been saying that for weeks, if not longer, that 32K level has to break. Now, if it is a bull flag, you know, this distance here, the break on that, again, pushes it up right around to where I was said, around 48K, 50K. So there you go. I mean, I think that that will happen. It's a matter of when. Does it happen in October, November, December? We don't know. You know, it's uh, not a bad time to be dollar cost averaging into, you know, your favorite cryptos and uh, holding some powder dry for if we do see some lower prices and a Black Friday sale for Bitcoin and the other ones. Uh, this article is a bit all over the place, but, uh, you know, huge week. Yeah, we've got CPI this week, I think. And so um, let's see. Uh, and actually, I don't know. what When is this article? I always double check this. Can't trust the news. October 9th. Yeah. So you know, we'll pull up the economic calendar and see that. Usually we do that in our our M3, Moonstream M3 class. And uh, if you'd like more information about that and access to me on a daily basis, you could go to moonstream.io slash M3. And uh, that's this page here. You sort of quick commercial here on the, the M3 Active Trader. Maybe you can join these classes live. Many of you are watching the uh, YouTube replay. So if you like what you see, uh, please like and subscribe. And you can find out more about Crypto Mastery at CryptoMastery.org. That's access to these classes and these uh, indicators that we are going to be talking about here today. So let's see here. We've got uh, not much more there to unpack. I don't know. Well, um, I'm going to go jump over to Crypto Panic and just see what's really going on. This is an aggregator, one of my favorite news aggregators. So we have... Um, uh, Bitcoin transactions are down following the ordinals hype. Yeah, you know, and uh, the NFT thing, at first I was disappointed I didn't get into that, but now I'm happy I didn't jump on the NFT bandwagon. They're saying that most of them are basically worthless. Uh, let's see, is Ripple due for a god candle? That's a big giant candle push up. Um, I don't know. I mean, that if they win the case definitively, yes, but uh, they've been predicting the outcome of that for, well, you know, for years. So I would wait on that and not buy on speculation because, um, you know, it might be a big buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. And I'm looking over here, guys, because I've got monitors all around here. So I'm not rolling my eyes if I look up here or looking around. Let's see. I don't see a whole lot happening in the news, you guys. Uh, so Dogecoin doesn't really matter. I mean, hits truce as recovery signal service. Not a lot of big news going on. Okay, so we let's do this. Let's jump out of here. Uh, let's see. Let's take a relevant case. More Sam Bankman Freed. That's not going to affect the markets really. Uh, Sam's, uh, uh, you know, escapades and uh, exploits. That's already been priced in. Let's see. This one is well, this one we wanted to see. Don't buy Bitcoins. This is Bitcoin. Sorry. Don't buy Bitcoin's dishonest attempt to paint itself green by uh, another bunch of unknown uh, people. All right. So, you know, everyone's trying to make a name for themselves. So don't believe everything that you hear. Okay. And this, uh, let's see. Uh, 
<clears throat> pardon me. This uh, doesn't. It's, it's saying a lot of nothing here. Um, let's not. I can, let's not waste our time on it. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin Magazine, sixteen-year cycle. That sounds interesting. Correlation to the internet bubble. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, now we can use our fancy highlighter. And uh, boom, there we go. Okay, apparently I need more practice on this here. What's the deal? Do I have to push it first? I, I tried it out yesterday. I was playing with it, and uh, that little box was not there. So maybe I have to push a little highlighter deal and then do that. Anyway, I'll play with that. I, it doesn't matter. Everyone's doing that. We don't really need it. Uh, let's see, diving. It just doesn't make it easier for you guys to follow along. New theory in this article that suggests Bitcoin is moving through a larger 16-year cycle, which I've heard, which can help us predict the direction of the Bitcoin price. A regular four-year cycle here divided into two parts. You know, we've got the uptrend and the downtrend. A regular four-year cycle, three-year uptrend followed by a one-year downtrend known as a bear market. So we're just coming out of the bear market. So that's the good news. So far, Bitcoin has completed four-year cycles and they're showing incredible accuracy. So hopefully, and everyone's counting on that uh, we have another one. And But consensus can be dangerous. We want to be careful. The They're saying one can't ignore the similarities between the market structure of the S&P during the dot-com cycle and the Bitcoin cycle. Regular financial markets also th went through these four-year cycles and majority on uh, the uptrend and the downtrend. Okay, this uh, feels like he's gonna, keep, he's gonna drag this out. What's the point? Uh, let me skim through this. So he's got a diagram here and that looks like the S&P, kind of a similar um, yeah, diagram, and then kind of showing that fourth four-year cycle was followed by a big crash. So we want to be, you know, I have heard that that this next bull market, you know, as always, there's dual parties. You know, some are saying this will be the biggest bull market in Bitcoin's history. We've got the ETF coming. We've got all this other adoption happening. But uh, in this scenario from the, the uh, internet bubble, we can see you know, we could see a smaller bull run and then a bigger crash. So guys, just, you know, we'll dive into that more tomorrow in the M3 class. Uh, this class here is really more on the news and uh, the tools. But um, so I'll leave this article open. We'll kind of unpack that a little bit deeper tomorrow. But the this guy's dragging on the point. Let me review this. And I think this is not new. This is not directly going to move the markets. And in the Crypto Mastery class, that's what we're looking for. So uh yeah let's jump over to the chart then let's go back to that and we've got this we close this uh bitcoin prices and uh well this is interesting bitcoin hovers over 27.5 right crypto bulls face 100 million dollar liquidations um you know that's pretty good number not the biggest we've seen but uh as liquidations uh, in liquidations as the altcoins drop if we lose that one trillion mark on the overall market cap then we could see a big capitulation down which would drag everything down. And that's a big number in a line in the sand we're watching. So uh, they're talking about the uh, conflict there and uh, the Ether sale by the Ethereum Foundation, of course, is weighing prices down on ETH. And uh, so I say bulls saw, saw over 100 million futures positions evaporated. And, uh, you know, this is the game that they play, but they're usually hedged. What they leave out of this is they're usually pretty well hedged with Delta neutral strategies. And we won't go into what that means, but, uh, you know, uh, if you're wondering where all this money going, often they're making that on the uh, hedge on the downside. Now, the, the whales and everyone else tend to be in more of a degenerate bunch and uh, are losing big and betting big. But it uh, looks like, uh, yeah, so Ether Foundation sold $2.7 million worth of tokens on Monday and sparking some concerns. You know, so the ETH chart uh, not looking as strong as, uh, as Bitcoin, but I do think Bitcoin leads the next bull cycle. So that would be expected. And we'll look at Bitcoin dominance again in tomorrow's class. So uh, let's just jump back over here. Uh, these are some of the coins that we saw moving last week. So we've got the heat map. Uh, we had a TRB teller, which was on the, the hot movers. And so we, you know, we did see some pushing higher on that. Looks like it's topped out. Let me close some of these out. I really want to look at uh, the main markets here, how they're respecting the indicators. So look at ETH just to show what was going on there. ETH looking pretty bearish, actually, with the uh, 21 and 50 week EMAs rolling over. And uh, but, you know, it's in this uh, sort of 
this wedge pattern. So we need to see, does it, if it loses, say 1500, 1550, I'd say watch out below. You know, this, this is not a very bullish pattern, but one of the things with our indicators that we like is it lets us see where others can't. So if we turn on the ERI Pro now on this weekly basis, and I will jump over to the daily, but we have a bullish early reversal indicator right here. And that uh, and it had a bullish engulfing candle, but it again has been selling off because of that sell pressure. But uh, here we see, you know, we're waiting for the trend strength indicator to get above 20. And uh, I'm going to put an alert on that because that would tell us a different story. And so when you start to really trust these indicators, uh, they'll give you the, the clues on what's really happening. And so, um, I mean, I think the overall pattern on the chart is bearish, so don't go buy it. But if we start pushing higher here a little bit more and the trend strength indicator gets above 20, which I just set an alert on, when these two align, we've got the TSI and the ERI, there's very high probability of follow through. And so that to me, if I wanted to go back in here and uh, double check or double click on that alert, the let me open that alert up because of what I forgot to do is I like to change what the alert message is when it pops up. So we don't need all this stuff in there. What I would say is TSI crossing up 20 on ETH one weekly and that's say buy uh, because it's basically a breakout and I'll put a, a question mark, but that's what it would take. And um at least I know what the message means when it first pops up. Because sometimes you see these alerts pop up and there's four or five of them and you don't really, you know, you, you want to get to the charts. Uh, so I like to put the messages right in there. So I know I've already done the analysis on that. But look, this is a, um, you know, it's a sending wedge here. Uh, I guess you could say it's a symmetrical wedge too, if you draw it this way. And it's got to either break to the upside or the downside. And these things tend to kind of have a little bit of a fake out. So I would just be careful. Watch the indicators on that. Are the radars mostly red? That's our multi time frame indicator that shows which way things are heading. Look pretty bearish on Ethereum. Uh, the ATR is still in the entry zone. It's red, but just going sideways. So can't put too much credence in that. Why don't we jump over to a daily and see what we see there? And uh, even though I'm going fast, by the way, uh, you know, I, I'm always looking for your questions to see if I can help you understand any of this better. So on the daily basis, just kind of a crab walk sideways, you know, it sold. Uh, this was a point where it, it, they would have sold it down anyway. The news is, is very coincidentally uh, aligned with what the charts are showing, you know, so it's always funny to see, you know, big news happened here when it was getting up to resistance anyway. So the point is we're heading sideways. Uh, I would keep an eye on ETH. Now here's, if it does start to break down below 1550, probably sell a half position and then wait for lower prices to buy back. But the problem, the reason, you know, we don't say don't sell everything, amateur traders go all in and go all out and typically lose and miss the big moves. So the market makers, which today are advanced algorithms, they understand this and they know if they push price down, uh, all the retail traders will jump out when really they want to move prices higher. It's an old day trading game. And uh, in the old days, uh, when I was a, a SOS bandit and we were trading on level two, you know, you'd see Goldman come in heavy on the bid, think, all right, it's going higher. Goldman's buying. And when in reality, they were selling through one of the third party brokers on the other side or vice versa. You know, so uh, this game, uh, you know, that's why we swing trade. It gives us our best advantage. So just looking through some of these on our uh, watch list here, we've got Solana pulling back to 21 week support. But, um, you know, we had a nice ERI there that uh, followed through. So Solana, you know, is showing some strength. We have the key and the bell and a signal line. So, you know, Solana is uh, to me looks pretty bullish here. If it can just hold above that 20 week, 21 week EMA. And uh, but from what our indicators are showing us, the trend strength indicator pushing higher, and that's the one that shows follow through the strength of the trend. Our signal line turning green, it's just starting to turn green, it's got a nice upward trajectory, and of course, our trend indicator, which shows when uh, the longer term trend should uh, continue. So, key and a bell, we're just getting a buy a bell signal now because we're in the low of this trough. This indicator works much better when we're really in a noticeable uptrend. So we're starting to see that. So that's good. And, but it's just still in a bottoming pattern. So, you know, it's good to always understand what part of the trend cycle that we're in. And uh, so in this case, we'll wait, we'll wait for it. 
All right, uh, Rune showing some strength. Let's take a look at Rune here and uh, pulling back here. It's it's overbought here. Some people might say, hey, it's pulling back to the 21 in the 50 day EMA. Uh, I don't like to buy though. Uh, when the uh, trend strength indicator here is going red. Uh, and so just if you're new here and haven't seen this, this uh, indicator has been our really our lifesaver throughout these markets. When these two align, this is on cryptomastery.org, when we see the up arrow on the ERI and the TSI goes green, boom, price goes higher. When we see the down arrow on the red or the red arrow on the ERI and TSI going red, markets go down. So if you're just trading this on a weekly basis, we've seen phenomenal uh, examples of how successful this can be and trading these mid market swings. And here's some actual examples here where we were calling tops and bottoms in the last market. So for example, capturing each of the cycle lows, these green arrows were when the ERI and TSI were aligned and the red arrows as well. So you could have avoided all of these 50% drops just following those two. And uh, some of these trades that were we were nailing back in 2021 up at 16, 657%, 300%, uh, 159%. So Rune, which we're looking at now, we were uh, we had bought it at 475 based on our signals. It went up 159%. This is December of 2021. And then right before the market rolled over, but that was a nice little run there on Rune. So where is Rune now? So we bought it at 475. We sold at 1196. That was the signal that went out, and uh, now it's back to a dot below a dollar sixty-five. So, you know, Rune has room to go. Uh, this is a there's more of a price history on this. Obviously, if I look at it on a different exchange, so let's just do that to be thorough and see how far back it went. But uh, yeah, so just if we get only get back to the old high. Okay, again, so we were, we bought it back in 2021, end of 2021. Uh, I guess it was around here. Where was that? Uh, 465. And it went up to 12. It's sort of, it's on, it's on logarithmic mode, so it doesn't look like much of a move. Let me just look in at the dates. December of 21, I believe it was our December pick. I know it shot up a lot, and then we got out of it. Maybe I have the dates wrong on that, but uh, at any rate, well, my point is that uh, if we just here go to the old highs, uh, you've got an 8x, you know, if it gets higher than that, it's a 10x. But right now we're not in buy mode here. We have a ERI and no, the TSI is overbought here. So this is due for a pullback. So we would not touch that. You want to wait for the ERI and TSI to align. So that's how we read the signals. It just takes the emotion out of all of what we do. A little bit of a learning curve as with anything, but uh, this has really been our secret weapon. Um, you know, just going through some of these, uh, nothing really looking that interesting. Well, I will say INJ is looking interesting and I had notes here to a possible buy. You know, what I like about this chart is it's the price is above the 21 day or 21 week moving average. We have an early reversal indicator. It's in a nice uptrending channel and the TSI is starting to go green. So that's INJ. Looks interesting there. Polygon has had some trouble. Just been going sideways for a while. No clear signals. When in doubt, stay out. We would not be buying Polygon. We had some ERIs in here that confirmed with the trend strength indicator. I'll turn off these other ones so it's not so confusing. And they just, uh, these other didn't, others didn't align. And sideways crab walk doesn't, it's not exciting for me. I want to see a clear bounce. Now, again, uh, if you're new, the, the ERI, the early reversal indicator, gives us uh this is what it really does the pretty green and red arrows we had coded on the chart to make it simple but what we're seeing here is the footprints of elephants okay so this green vertical line will trigger if the oscillator gets down below three and back above 20 in three time periods now what would push it back up that fast money flow and uh you know real volume to push it higher there's some other math and quant work on side of it that Joe, our, our illustrious uh, mad scientist programmer and uh, quant engineer created uh, being a Keltner channel and some other stuff. Uh, That's a highly technical term. The other stuff uh, that I'm not sure I fully understand. I just said, Joe, I see a pattern here. We should make this into an indicator. And uh, when it comes down again to these low levels, especially off zero, <clears throat> and back above 20 in a certain number of time periods, that's the, the bulk of the indicator. So, and then we wait for that trend strength indicator to confirm. So Polygon just in a sideways action, but uh, we can see how, you know, over time 
this has been great for us on those two, like the market cycle top and some of the bottoms. Don't want to backtrack. Just want to point that out. So um, the reason for that is not to sound self-serving, but I, those of you that are here every week, learn to trust the indicators, but make sure you're looking for the right uh, alignment. Uh, the first thing to look for, and uh, of course, our trader checklist is what we use for that, is the alignment of the ERI. So check, it's going green. That alone is not enough. So we also want to see the TSI going green and is it uh, above the 20 line? Okay, so that would be the second criteria. And then the third is the signal line down below as it also turned from red to green. So in this middle example, we have the TSI. Is it green and above the 20 line? Here it would not be. Here it would be above the 20 line. Although for some reason, this visual doesn't show it as green. But anyway, signal line, red uh, red here went to green. The more of these that's, that line up, then the more accuracy and the more strength the uh, pattern has. And you have other ones here, bullish engulfing, is it at support? So I really encourage you guys to use the trader success checklist. And uh, this is where I'm supposed to give you the link for that, which we keep changing. So let me see if I have it correct. You can get a free copy of that at uh, moonstream.io slash trade checklist, I believe it is. So let me try this and make sure that's it. No, it's not it. So we've changed this. Myrene, I need that link again. So uh, the checklist, let's just call it checklist. Hopefully that's it. Uh, and it isn't. So uh, yeah, we, we uh, Myrene, if you're still listening there, moonstream.io, we keep changing this thing. So it's um, it's hard to remember. And in my... Uh, it's my, uh, moonstream.io slash success checklist. I success checklist. Yep. Okay. Let's just make a checklist if we can and make it both because uh, it's too hard to remember that suggest success checklist okay so here hopefully that'll go to the right place there we go so you can go ahead and opt in for that and uh, get a free copy of this and that's uh, so that's moonstream.io slash success checklist uh, well shorter the better so we could usually have it say uh, just say checklist i think would be better but uh there you go you can go get that signed up for that get a free copy on um on the internet and then again use that uh, along with our indicators to give really get your your success ratio and score much higher and also talks about one of our fa- favorite indicators which we kind of invented called the rocket we talk about that which was uh all in all the rocket trumps everything so make sure you get a copy of this anyway uh let's come back to the uh, chart here and um it is where did it go we had Filecoin, we had this one, and uh, it totally threw me off there. Filecoin, I guess that's where we were on. So XLM, nothing really happening. You know, we skimmed down through these. Uh, we had Unify on our list. Uh, Unify looking sort of interesting, but it's overbought on the trend strength indicators, so I would not be buying that. Uh, let's see. This is where we can jump over here to this, the top movers. And uh, and then an- analyze it. Put some new ones on our list. We found some good ones on this last week. Um, Strax, okay, Strax. I've been I've known about Strax for a while now, and uh, it's uh, it's a micro cap. It's under a dollar, but a one of the people I interview on the Crypto Summit has been talking about Strax for years. Uh, it's not an endorsement to go buy it, but let's see. Let's see what the chart tells us. Okay. Well, listen, this is interesting. So what do I like about this chart? I'll make this bigger. Uh, I like that this has pushed up higher and is we have the ERI green box. We have the the TSI uh, and the ERI are green. And the 21 day and 50 day EMA are pushing up. And so prices above that but uh, mostly I like the ERI TSI have confirmed and it's above a strong support level. Okay, so if we were to go back to our checklist here, let's uh, let's redo this, and it'll show it. It'll give us a score. I can already tell us it's a good score. We have an ERI. So let me do this. I'll pull it out so I can toggle back and forth, and then I'll go back to the chart. Oh, okay. How did it? Uh, one second. So we go back to the chart on Strax. 
Yes. So basically ERI, the green arrow, also this green line here, uh, this is a check mark. Yes. Okay. Is the, does the TSI green and above the 20 line? Yes, it is. It's green and above 20. So that's another bullish signal. Yeah, so we choose that. Has the signal line turned from red to green? So this is our, our four horsemen, as we call them. And so ERI TSI signal and bell. We have a signal line that is green and, and nice trajectory higher. So that also is a yes. Okay, so now our trade success score is three out of 19. And, um, you know, like to see a little higher, ideally. So now we can go to the next screen is the trend indicator showing a bell. So I'll turn this back on and we do have a new bell on this and pushing higher. So that's a check. The key is the key signals a, tr a new trend may be forming. The midline is red means there's no trend. The key says, hey, a new trend may be forming. The bell is the buy. This right here. All right. So. We will uh, say the trend is there. So now we have a score of 4 out of 19. Does the trend indicator have a green midline? It does as well. So that is also contributes to the score. Uh, I've got a bug there. That's not working. Is there a bullish engulfing candle? Okay. So I don't know, guys. There's a bug in the uh, PDF here. Suddenly the check marks aren't working. So at any rate, you get the idea. We're already at a 7 out of 19 uh, on the um, trading success score. And see, I don't know why these are working. So why aren't these other? We don't have a rocket. Well, we might. Uh, see, we don't have the rocket. We talk more about that tomorrow. And uh, we have our other indicator we haven't talked about, our vol index. So let's kind of pull that up too. Uh, but is the price above a support trend line? It is. So it's back up above these two. So that's another part of the score. Is there bullish engulfing? No, we don't see that. And uh, is the price above the 21 and 50? It is. I love when the 21 week crosses the 50 week. It looks like it will. So, you know, Strax is looking pretty interesting here so much. So let's add it to our Crypto Mastery watch list. And uh, let's see here. Crypto Mastery, there it is. So now it's on our, our watch list here. We can move that up into uh, where we'll keep an eye on it. So these are all coins we've looked at in the past. All right, let's keep going, though. We have an 8 out of 19 score on Strax. Is price breaking above trend line resistance? Well, uh, let's see. You know, Another great indicator of when it might be a good time to get into a trade is to draw sort of a trend line. And, you know, it is. It's breaking above that long-term downward resistance. Okay, so Strax is also doing that. Is price breaking above? So we've got that one. And then the vol index. So let's go ahead and add that in here. Should be under my favorites. Uh, and that is one of the indicators that you get access to as part of the uh, Crypto Mastery, uh, the Crypto Mastery invites, uh, or sorry, <laughs> Crypto Mastery indicators. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. The Vol Index is excellent and amazing on the uh, one hour, four hour, and the daily, if, if you can get it. But look at this. We don't often see the Vol Index on the weekly strongly turning higher. When it comes out of this oversold zone, and turns from red to black. We had a couple of fake outs here, but look at that thing shooting higher. This looks very strong. The last time we saw this kind of doing that was back in uh, June of 2020. And uh, let's see, June of 2020, right in here before it had this really strong push up higher. So, you know, we've got a really good uh, score here. 10 out of 19 on the uh, trade success checklist. So that's all you need for a bullish entry you've got some more advanced setups in here so not trade advice but as far as our indicators go this is looking very good on the uh, strax chart now that's the weekly you can take a look at it daily if we'd like similar pattern back up above you know above the 21 and 50 day emas a uh, little bit more inconclusive on the daily but that's why i like to look at the weekly charts so we'll definitely keep an eye on on strax and a little green check on that so interesting chart. Glad we found that. Let's see. Um, these are some past ones we've looked at that uh, are at this point, you know, waiting on another cycle down. Uh, let's go back to our what's looking now. Something like Squid Grow. What you want to do on these, if you're using the trading view, um, market gainers, price gainers, you can Google this. Just use this over here as a filter. The volume is uh, very low, 338K. Uh, you really want to see this in the millions most times. 
and this market cap for Squid Grow. You know, there was a rug pull not too long ago named after that Netflix show Squid Game. Uh, you want to stay away from those. Uh, I'm not even going to pull that up. Uh, so let's see now, but this one here tracks is a solid project, 174 market cap rank or just market rank. And uh, it's up 20% in the last 24 hours, market cap, 121 million. Um, this is what to keep on your radar, you guys, and go do your own research. So um, now let's take a look at Hello Labs. Now, these smaller ones are going to get really pushed around a lot. And, uh, you know, I don't recommend really trading them. I'll open it up uh, just as an example to uh, show you guys. But our indicators work best on solid projects that uh, have a lot of room to go and they are have some volume. So, you know, look, this one has a nice looking chart here, but it's one that you'd want to have a stop loss. At the very least, you'd want to have it be a, above the support trend line and uh, not seeing that. So uh, I'm not going to add it to our list there. And so let's keep going on these here. So Strax, I'll turn this off, although uh, you could... Uh, Anyway, um, on here, LCX, a lot of these, I'm just scanning on the volume category. So we have 2.3 million. These are just small volume, not recognizable coins. Sometimes you can find some gems in there. Uh, UNFI is already on our list. So let's take a look at uh, UNFI. Already had that up. You know, it's looking interesting, but again, it's overbought on that weekly time frame. And uh, the daily time frame, however, showing, that's why I look at both of these. Let's take a look at this. So UNFI looking pretty interesting here. It's, it's on the bottom edge of the upper trending trend line. Let me turn off the Fibonacci here. And I can do that uh, over in the uh, object tree. So let's see the Fibonacci right there. We'll just turn that off temporarily. Okay, good. Um, what I like about this, it's in a new upper trending channel. So we've got a bullish engulfing candle. We have an ERI. We have a TSI going green. From on the daily time frame, that's enough for me to say normally I would buy that and uh, with a stop loss. The nice thing about this too is uh, from a stop loss perspective, pretty clear area of support. So if you get below that level, that might be an area that you would uh, set your stops. So I'll just turn that to red so it's not uh, uh, maybe stands out a little bit more. I'll go three volume uh, with the three. But anyway, you can see. Uh, it's also trying to push above this older time frame resistance level. So this is kind of one to watch here. UNFI bullish engulfing candle. Want to see how it closes because these can sell off as we know. So what I would do there is put an alert to say, all right, if it gets back above the high today was around 730. I'm going to put an alert on this at 750. And see if uh, crossing up 750, I'd want to say, and just put a little note in there Bye. Buy question mark, question mark to come back and look at it. All right. I don't see any more questions, you guys. So probably going to wrap things up here. But uh, if you do have any questions on what we're talking about or the indicators, uh, now's the time. UNFI, I'll move that up here under Strax. Uh, we had uh, INJ, which is also an upward trending channel. But on the indicators, looking like a brief pullback there. And uh, just kind of in a waiting game on Bitcoin, back to a daily on Bitcoin, you know, seeing you know, this pullback was expected. We had a bearish early reversal indicator yesterday. The TSI is going red. So, look, I think we have a few more days of downside in Bitcoin, probably down to around 26,000, you know, and then it's still in that sideways pattern before it decides if it's going to really run higher or not. Uh, let's see, we can look at um, XRP also trying to hold a lower trend channel, not looking terribly strong, though with these dual early reversal indicators. And uh, let's see what else we have on there. Yeah. So nothing much more to see that. If you guys have anything you want me to look at and pull up though, let me know. And again, if you, uh, if you like what you're seeing on, you're watching the YouTube replay, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe so you'll get notified when we do more of these. When these markets turn, we're really gonna see some uh, fireworks here. And uh, these indicators are our secret weapon over at Moonstream Crypto and uh, all of our services there. So, and if you'd like to uh, know more about that, you can go over to just moonstream.io and find out more about uh, all that we do, including the upcoming virtual crypto summit. Again, that's the future of crypto uh, summit. 
Uh, we've got a number of services here, including our M3 Active Trader, which is daily classes or daily access to me and Signal and weekly class on Wednesday. Our Retire Rich Inner Circle, which is looking at emerging markets and uh, future high flyers. We're identifying 20 to 50 to 70x possible upside candidates and uh, many of you that are here live are in that. So um, we could look more about what we do. We do offer some coaching, limited space there and the uh, crypto summit, which I was telling you about. Also some free reports you might want to have. You can also get the trader check uh, success checklist here and uh, sign up for our newsletter as well. It's a weekly Monday newsletter. We have a report, a five mistakes crypto traders make. Also a, a report I did on the past and future for Bitcoin, originally called Blood in the Streets, but it's a great essay on why now is a great time to be buying and getting into crypto. It talks about the market cycles and uh, the Wyckoff patterns and accumulation distribution. So there's some cool stuff in that and a report on how is blockchain growing. So really good resources there. Let me double check this link on the Trader Success Checklist, see if that still works. And it does, good, good. Um, so you can find out more about all of that there. And of course, the Future of Crypto Summit, make sure you sign up. That's going on, uh, it's going online next week or in 10 days or so. It's, well, today's the 10th. So 16 days from now, October 26th to 28th, and uh, some great speakers. It's free to join and attend that. So uh, we've got an amazing lineup of speakers. Like I said, we're interviewing and uh, great topics here on uh, how to predict market changes before they happen, how to build wealth in the next bull run, and wallet hacking, what no one is telling you. A lot of people in news lately, even Mark Cuban had his wallet hacked uh, for a lot of money. A popular YouTuber apparently had 700,000 stolen from his wallet. So that's a great session. And we also talk about it in another session about wallets down below. And so um, just some great topics here. I had a great conversation with uh, about leaving a legacy. So when you do get to do, you know, build your bags up in the next bull run, you know, make sure you're planning for how to leave it behind in case uh, the old hit by a bus scenario, what happens if? So that's a good uh, conversation uh, with um, Eric Wade. So you can read through all these topics here and uh, recommend that you do that when you have some time and uh, talk to Merrick, the VP of marketing for BitPay. I had a great conversation about that. And uh, also Dr. Demelza Hayes, Chief Economist over at Cointelegraph, PhD, and she talks about how you can trade tax-free in your Roth IRA on a Kraken account. Uh, I use uh, another IRA platform, but it's not really geared toward active trading, right? So if you want to do that, that's a great interview to listen to that. So again, futureofcryptosummit.com. And we are going to be pushing that all through uh, the end of the month because uh, it is uh, tons of great content that's free. You definitely want to go check that out. All right. Well, that's about all we have time for you guys. Uh, right on the nose, uh, wrapping up right at the top of the hour. So thanks, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.